a line can be drawn on silver's price chart starting in 2012, capturing 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 reactions. For 12 consecutive years, silver's price has never managed to make a weekly close above this line of resistance. And now in March of this year, we finally saw that happen, with silver breaking out above a three and a half year consolidation range between 2020 and 2024. Since its breakout in March of this year, silver's strength has been so far relentless. In fact, if we zoom in a little bit closer, when we compare silver's returns to the S&P 500 since September of 2022, we see that silver has returned about 80% since then, while the S&P 500 has moved up by only 45%. So silver has significantly outperformed one of the best performing global stock market indexes by over 30%. Silver's strength during this period has flown right under the radar. The question now is whether silver's strength can continue, potentially accelerating higher, or whether all of the juice has already been squeezed out of silver and it's poised for another lengthy bear market like we saw in the 2010s. If we rewind to the early 2000s, we immediately see incredible periods of strength on silver are not out of the ordinary. Between 2004 and 2006, silver rallied by 158%. Between 2009 and 2011, silver moved up by a massive 427% with both of these examples ending in a spectacular parabolic melt-up. If we copy and paste this move from 2004 to the price action that we've had today, we do see some similarities in the behavior of the price. But it would be a little bit too simple to take any conclusions from this. This type of strength on silver requires a very particular type of macro environment that was in place back in 2005. So let's take a look at whether we have the same conditions today. Firstly, in order for silver to rise, it needs the price of gold to rise. After all, these are both called precious metals. Every single period of strength on silver has been matched with a period of strength on gold. Now, sometimes you get what's called dislocations between gold and silver. For example, in both 2003 and 2010, gold was steadily moving higher, but when you look at the price of silver during these periods, it was struggling to make new highs. Now, these dislocations proved to be fantastic for traders to take advantage of because silver ended up catching violently upwards to the price of gold. Today, we have that kind of dislocation between gold and silver, where gold has been consistently making new all-time highs throughout 2024, and silver is only just now taking out its high from May, with silver still being significantly below its all-time high from 2011. Now, the only problem is that these types of dislocations can last for a long time. That's what happened, for example, between August of 2018 and March of 2020. Gold was steadily moving higher while silver was clearly struggling. It even made an 11-year low in March of 2020, while gold was significantly higher. So how do we know whether or not silver can actually catch up to the incredible strength that we've seen on the price of gold? In order to answer that, we can look at something called the gold to silver ratio. That's basically the performance of the price of gold against the price of silver over time. And it's going to give us a lot of information. This is what the gold to silver ratio looks like going back to 2016. When this line is going up, it means that gold is outperforming silver. Now, that usually happens when there's a lot of uncertainty in financial markets. For example, this is what happened to the gold to silver ratio during the COVID recession. When we zoom out a little bit more to the great financial crisis, we see that gold also significantly outperformed silver during that period of economic turmoil. The reason for this is because gold is less volatile than silver. So during periods of economic uncertainty, investors prefer flocking to the more stable precious metal. If we see a global recession materialize over the next few months, it's very likely that gold will be significantly outperforming silver in that type of environment. Now, the other massive influence on the gold to silver ratio is none other than the US dollar. This is an index called the Dixie. It's the US dollar currency index. And we see that as the Dixie fluctuates up and down, you also see the performance of gold to silver fluctuate up and down. Now, over the last couple of years, we've seen the gold to silver ratio be pretty much in a sideways trading range. For the most part, traders that have been buying gold at the bottom of this trading range and selling it to buy silver at the top of the trading range have been quite successful. When we look at the US dollar index, it's also been in a kind of trading range during this period. If the dollar is able to break below this trading range, you'd probably see silver perform incredibly well in that type of environment. If the dollar bounces here and potentially even breaks out, that would not be great news for the price of silver. Now, how do we know what the US dollar is going to do? Well, if you think about what the US dollar index is, the Dixie, it basically compares the US dollar to a basket of other developed economy currencies, such as the Euro, the British pound, the Chinese Yuan, the Japanese Yen, and the strength or weakness of the US dollar depends entirely on how attractive the currency is compared to the others. So in other words, what yield you are getting to own the US dollar relative to other currencies. That's why the strength or weakness of the US dollar is strongly influenced by the decisions of the Federal Reserve that sets short-term interest rates. 
Now, you may have heard recently the Federal Reserve has begun to lower interest rates. We can see that by looking at short-term interest rates that have dropped rapidly from 5% to 4.5%. And this is possibly what has been driving the recent weakness in the U.S. dollar. If the Federal Reserve continues to cut interest rates, it could prove to be a drag on the U.S. dollar, just as it was throughout the months of June until September. Unfortunately, there's no way to read the mind of the Federal Reserve board members to know what they're going to do next. All we know is that they've said they're going to continue lowering interest rates. And if they follow through on that, it could weaken the U.S. dollar and strengthen silver, assuming that we don't see a major period of economic turmoil. Now, when we look at a technical price chart of silver, we see it recently broke out above a downtrend line in September following the Federal Reserve's announcement of interest rate cuts. From a trend perspective, silver is on a solid uptrend right now, with the price above all of its key upward sloping moving averages. We see that silver recently broke out of a price channel. For traders that want to go long on silver based on the bullish trend, this recent breakout could provide an attractive risk reward by placing a stop loss below the price channel. Because if silver fails to hold this breakout, that would become a false breakout and signal that silver is rejecting off this horizontal level of resistance. False breakouts are bearish setups, which are often followed by additional downside. Traders who want to go short on silver following a false breakout could look to set a stop loss above the price channel, which could also offer an attractive risk reward. We have an instrument called SLV on Capital.com. This is an ETF that tracks the underlying price of silver perfectly. So if you want to trade silver, create an account on Capital.com completely for free. Don't miss your chance.